Welcome to a new episode of Zoom In. Ladies and gentlemen, as we always know, Zoom In is a program which brings you the latest in the world of cinema. We bring you the past, we bring you the present. We discuss all about our different actors and actresses, our prominent ones, our celebrated ones. When it's time for any memorial, we're always around to celebrate the memorial and we're always about around to celebrate uh, festivals where uh, music um, uh, Zoom In is a very special program that's always there for cinema. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have with us uh, the great cinema critique, Mr. Ahmed Saadeddin. And Mr. Ahmed Saadeddin is going to be uh, discussing with us about uh, the cinema heritage when it comes to musical songs and the past and the present of music songs. A very good afternoon, sir. Sir, before we kick off today's episode, I have a little introduction to talk more about and that we're going to be based on the questions of the uh, episode, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Egyptian cinema witnessed since it started legendary and famous singers whom became movie stars, which uh, participated in many different films and which made turning and very important films that we can never deny and forget till the day in the world of cinema. Example of these uh, singers whom acted is Mohammed Abdel Wahab, Layla Murad, Mohammed Fawzi, Abdel Halim Hafiz, and many, many others. Of course, if I mention all of them, we're not going to finish today. Musical films, ladies and gentlemen, had great influence in the heritage of Egyptian cinema. Cinema also participated in the enhancing and development of Egyptian singing. And, uh, of course, it's worth to mention that Egyptian singing is parallel and uh, suitable to the cinema language, uh, preserving the image of the famous celebrated singers in different stages of their career, meaning the cinema enhanced uh, the means of their singing and brought them to a higher level of singing. They all worked on helping each other. This I, I'm discussing now the past. They all used to work on helping each other, not competing with each other, enriching and uh, producing a wonderful image of cinema with wonderful results. Nowadays, we uh, notice musical films, on the contrary, are very rare. However, cinema presented films uh, starring famous singers like uh, Mustafa Amar, Amir Munib, the belated Amir Munib that we celebrate nowadays, his uh, memorial, of course, and it's worth to mention because Amir Munib was one of the most famous Egyptian singers that the Arab world and Egypt witnessed. Khaled Salim as well uh, was a singer that nowadays act, and it's very obvious that made a turning point in his career in the series Ma'moon wa Shuraka'u last Ramadan. And Mohammed Fouad um, introducing short musical cinema songs that does not hinder the drama sequence of the film, meaning it's not like it used to be in it's different drama song now the songs are very short and in the sequence of the film that uh, does not hinder the song or it's not a musical film in the means of a musical film Sir, a very good afternoon once again. We have the pleasure of having you with us. And I'd like to know your opinion about what I just said about the past and the present, and musical films in the past, and musical films in the present. And can we name them nowadays musical films or not? If we come to talk about the beginning of the cinema in Egypt, maybe we should go back to the 30s of the last century. When uh, the cinema emerged in Egypt, uh, at that time, cinema was based mainly upon two main pillars. Uh, 
two different types of actors, theater actors and singers on the other side. Because for singers, they used to have uh, uh, live shows. So when they went to the cinema, they brought their audience along with them to the cinema. This can easily uh, show why Omu Kalthum entered the world of cinema, how Muhammad Abdul Hab entered the world of cinema as well. That era took almost 10 years. Uh, so if we come to, to look uh, at uh, movies or uh, films uh, produced for uh, particular singer, we can find that they are either musical uh, movies or uh, movies uh, that have a singer uh, who is singing songs written in particular for this film or for this movie, or is made mainly for the drama. And here we can say that those uh, films achieved real success, but practically speaking, I can easily say that this has a beginning a beginning for a new era, era of the emergence of uh, Laila Murad, and that made a big uh, transition in uh, the musical uh, movies, because now we do have uh, singers who is also having uh, good talent in acting. Uh, so the different movies used to carry her name and here we can witness a, a sort of a transition in the cinema world and starting from this point we can say that there has been a different technique or a new technique found on different levels either, either we are talking about the level of the actress herself or even for different songs and from here we can find that Layla Murad started learning acting because at that time there has been a director has been a photography director used to sit with her and try to raise her awareness about different techniques related to the film the extent that Mr. Abdel Halim Masri is the biggest photography director while uh, he, he used indeed to take into consideration different facial features of Layla Murad. Layla Murad had a big front so when he used to uh, uh, shoot her with his, his, uh, with his camera he used to shadow that part of her front because he is trying to show her uh, as a star uh, and since then we started seeing uh, musical movies and uh, different shows inside those movies. Laila Murad achieved big success, unprecedented success indeed uh, during that time and 
Following this, we had Farid al Atrash. Farid al Atrash started having his own movies as well. But here we may stop at a very important point. Farid al Atrash is a singer in the first place. I mean that most of his movies with late Henry Barakat used to include him mainly as a singer, used to uh, repeat the shooting of different scenes and he used to tell uh, Mr. Henry, Bar uh, Henry Barakat at that time, I'm a singer, I'm not an actor. He used to say, OK, we'll go step by step, just to give him the feeling of the camera, not uh, the feeling of the theater. <laughs> قالت ليش راح من ورايا لازم كنت سكران فينا فضلت حضرتك تسيني بشمبانيا وترقصني مامبا وطانجو بلدي لحد ما عدمتني العافية الساعة نانا نانا رقاصة آه نانا فين بابا ماما في التليفون الحمد لله يعني ما شافونيش وانا جاي اوعى تقول لهم انك شفتني لكن آه فلوس عايز فلوس لا مش قصدي انا عايز اقول لك ما تقوليش حاجة ذاتي وسيدني لا يظبطونيش <تصفيق> Sir, uh, we kick off today's episode uh, asking you about the amazing, great singer, of course, Amir. Amir Munib. And Amir Munib, of course, we unfortunately here in Egypt and the entire Egyptian society missed him so much as, um, as a uh, wonderful singer in the world of singing here in Egypt. And he has loads of fans. And nowadays we celebrate his, his memory as he passed away a few days ago, actually um, a years ago, but his anniversary was his death anniversary was a few days ago. And uh, he left us, of course, girls, uh, beautiful ones. Uh, Amir Munib uh, starred in four films. Most important is the movie Sihr al Ayun, and I need to know your comment about this film, sir. If we come to talk about Amir Munib as a singer, he is a well-known figure because this is his main arena. Indeed, he used to be a public singer. He used to be fully admired by hearts, and uh, when he tried to use all of those skills or talents inside the cinema, frankly speaking, if you come to look at the era where Amir Munib has been acting, you can easily find that there has been a group of singers who entered the world of cinema. Amir Munib used to precede them with steps. He had been steps forward because he worked on himself. He tried to know how, as a singer, he can enter the world of cinema, but in a good way. Most of the singers who try to enter the world of acting do this as singers. According 
They uh, can easily have uh, reactions, and it used to be from overacting for the camera because he used to be singing in front of the audience, and uh, he may have such kind of an overreaction. And this may be acceptable in the theater, but this is not acceptable in front of the camera. I believe that he has been trained on acting as one of the director's assistant, and uh, when he uh, started. You can easily find that you can easily see an actor, not a singer. You can consider Amir Mini Sahilayuni to be uh, an actor rather than a singer, the one who can be on the same uh, line with Mustafa Amar or the singer Mustafa Amar. Mustafa Amar worked on himself as an actor. Amir Munib even selected type of stories through which he can enter the cinema. Indeed, Amir Munib selected stories that may make the people love him, and indeed it's love paralleled with respect rather than sympathy. That was the kind of art uh, Amir Munib entered the cinema is like Sefer Layoun or El Ghawas. Maybe his life has been too short, however, he played his role in a very good way. So if we try to uh, measure whether he is an actor or a singer inside the movie, we can easily find that almost 60% is considered to be an actor inside this movie rather than a singer. أنا جاهزة يا أستاذ. إيه ده؟ هو ده اللي أنا طلبته؟ ما هو؟ أنا طالب إيه في الأوردر يا عمرو؟ طالب عربيتين جولف وثمانية موتوسيكلات وأربعة بيتش باجي. اللي أنا طلبته ما جاش ليا بيري. ما هو ما هو ما هو أنا ما عرفتش أتصرف غير في دول إمبارح كلمتك على الموبايل لقيته مقفول. فـ ساسو قالت لي ساسو؟ آه قالت لي ماشي الاوردر على كده تاخدي اوامر ساسو حلو قوي ما دام ساسو بقت تدي اوامر لمديره الانتاج وبتتاخد الاوردر بتاعي تبقى تيجي هي تخرج بدالي فركش شفتي مش قلت لك كان لازم نقول له او لما عرف انك قلتي لي ماشي الاوردر على كده زعل وتعصب جامد وقال تبقى تيجي هي تخرج بدالي انا خرج على نت والله فكره روشه ميرسي يا باري يس ايه رايك يا رهيب ليه لا اه شغلنا بتشرب برضو بس في حاجه واحده ناقصاتي ما بفهمش في الاخراج صح ولا في اي حاجه اول مره في حياتي فركش وانتي السبب ده خراب بيوت لو فاكره انك بتحمي في ابوكي ابوكي هو اللي هيكوع تمن اليوم ده ده انا ده انا كنت بوفر لك الميزانيه بتوفري ملايين وتخسرين عمر بيجيبوا ملايين وتقولي ان الدرس اقتصاد ولا انت صدقت في قفطه دي تصدق صح انا طلعت غبيه قوي سوري سوري يا شيخ ما تروحش تشتغلي في البورصه مع ابوكي ما بحبش البورصه بقيت احب الاعلانات قوي وعاوز اتعلم بتتكلمي في ايه؟ انت عشان تتعلمي لازم تشتغلي بجد هتمرني زي زي اي حد مبتدئ وعايز يتعلم الشغلانه هتيجي في مواعيد الموظفين مش هتمشي غير باذن مني تقدري؟ اقدر هتعمل ايه بالليل؟ بفطري لعب جيمز على الكمبيوتر ولو غلطتي اي غلطه في الشغل هتهزقي زيك زي اي حد بيغلط يا ربي تحفه يا ربي تحفه Oh, well, can that make you smack it any holes? Sir, unfortunately, before Amir Muni passed away, his last film was Kamil Al Asaf, and he starred this film with Hala Shiha, Bagaik Gidawi, and Hassan Hosni. What do you think about the film Kamil Al Asaf that Amir Muni acted in and he starred the film? And unfortunately, we don't have much to say about Amir Munib, but that he was a great actor and a singer as well, and that uh, the world of cinema and singing in Egypt missed this uh, um, person very much. As uh, for Amir Munib, as we said, he is a singer. But of course, when we say that he is an actor, this means that he is really distinguished. Maybe he is distinguished at some level, but this doesn't mean necessarily that he must be distinguished on other levels as well. So, 
in order to reach this level of 90%, this would require from him a very long time. Maybe in his last weekend, the love story between him and the Halashiha on the other side, the kind of the suspense they had, and also having her sister, a third person that's trying to differentiate between them or to separate between them. This made the people love this romantic story because the people sympathize with the kind of romance they are having. The, there has been a third person who has been playing the role of the evil. So the story itself should Amir Munib in this way. Meanwhile, Amir Munib started his reaction as a singer and uh, the artistic part has been very high in Amir Munib and here you can find that the film is really distinguished. The film achieved a big success because Amir Munib at that time had a big name and also there is a very important point. You may go to a movie to uh, a singer or an actor but you may not go back uh, to the cinema or to movie for the same person. However, you can have a big audience if you start uh, telling your friends or your colleagues about this same movie if you like it. I believe that this movie achieved success because uh, people loved him a lot. And uh, Amir Muniba has been really popular at that time. Moreover, Hala Shiha is a beautiful lady, is a beautiful actress. She has been very beautiful at that time and she was so young. People were trying to follow her movies. Raga Gidawi as well, Hassan Hosni. Hassan Hosni has been a common, has been a common element, a common factor of those movies. Ola Ghanim that has been playing the role of evil. However, I can easily say that it's been really attractive to the audience. So all of those elements has been the main element or a main factor that has been attracting the people to watch this movie. I <laughs> Another uh, very important uh, singer, which we account as one of the pioneers of this generation, and is the star Amr Diab, of course. And Amr Diab starred the film Al Afarit, which was his first film to star, and he was with Badi Hakemel. Um, from your point of view, sir, how do you evaluate Amr Diab as a singer when he came to act in the film Al Afarit? Amr Diab. Amr Diab during the 80s up till our present day and we are talking about almost 30 years we can easily say that Amr Diab is smart enough to uh, take step forward and there is a big difference between intelligence or being smart and 
uh, uh, the individual skills or uh, talents. If we come to uh, measure uh, the um, capacity or ability of Amr Diab compared to other singers, you can find that maybe the voice is much more better or the sound is much more st stronger. But why Amr Diab has been distinguished? distinguished because he has been smart enough to stay on the top for almost years and years. When the singers start achieving success, particularly during the 80s, eyes of the cinema used to attract him. Um, However, what has been really great about the Al-Farid movie has been the presence of Hassan Hussein Muddi Mustafa, uh, the singer, and he's a highly distinguished singer, and he used to be called uh, the maker of the stars. He used to focus upon young actors. So it was really great about that movie that they didn't rely upon Amr Diab as a singer, but they relied upon a very important story as well as the presence of Madiha Kamil along with a group of uh, children. Even some of the audience or the viewers who watched this movie in the cinema believe that that story of the kidnapped children who are away from, uh, far away from their own uh, um, uh, parents, indeed, uh, this has been a really interesting story for the viewers in addition to Amr Diab. And his uh, stories in the movie uh, have been uh, very simple. We can remember uh, the uh, last uh, uh, song. It has been very nice. I believe Hassan Mustafa has been smart enough to reduce movies inside the movie so that uh, he was trying to focus upon the uh, acting rather than singing. That's why Amr Jeb achieved the unprecedented success. That was almost 1988-1989, I think. Uh, Later on, Amr Diab had another move to school, the ice cream figurine, and it was starred by Amr Diab. I'm <laughs> And you can easily find Amr Diab, uh, the singer and actor as well. But when we come to measure his uh, talent as an actor, you can find that is less than others. He's very successful as a singer. He's very smart in the way he selects his own songs. And in the field of uh, acting, he was in need. He was uh, in a need for much more time. Maybe an ice cream figurine. Khairi Shara worked with uh, Amr Diab. However, there has been a problem because the movie has been talking uh, or uh, targeting Western uh, viewers rather than Eastern ones. And, uh, some of the people said that uh, they fully admire songs inside the movie, but uh, uh, has Amr Jab been uh, distinguished by acting? No, I don't think so. 
the best evidence is that the one who achieved success is the uh, movie album, uh, the album of the songs of this movie, rather than the movie itself. If you come to measure the ability of Amr Jab as an actor, uh, it has been much less than others. Uh, Kamri Jeb has been trying to uh, uh, get away from acting for a while and to work only as uh, an actor two years later. Uh, he had another movie with Omar Sharif. Yostra, as well as a big group to school back to Labu Gadu Hope. That movie, despite the fact that it includes many big names, um, Omar Sharif Yostra, Amr Jab, and his talent or skill has been full and comprehensive. However, the movie didn't achieve any success. Why? because uh, the uh, uh, acting uh, talent is much less than the singing talent or the talent of singing but we can easily find that uh, he has been trying all the time to uh, renew in the field and renew the type of songs he used based upon this uh, i believe 1993 or 1994 up to our present day was this the reason because the other film did not gain the success that he expected that's the reason that uh, Amr Dieb uh, did not act <laughs> any more <laughs> films all the reasons this is one of the main reasons however uh, Amr Dieb had another beginning because he used to have a sort of video clips uh, he used to have one video clip uh, per year where he used to present a new form of music and also the style of Amr Dieb where he used to be like to be followed by other youths uh, has been very strong as for the other Side, the side related to the cinema or acting, there has been two things that hindered Amr Jab, the kind of fear or concerns he had about Jaddu uh, Labu Hub. Two years or three years later, a new wave of the cinema emerged. The new comedians, Ala Walidin, Ashraf Abdel Bai, Muhammad Hanindi, Ahmad Adam, and that group. So there has been a new uh, trend towards the uh, uh, comedy movies. Amri Diab felt that uh, he has no space and uh, he decided to focus upon music. He achieved peak success. Throughout the last five years, we heard that uh, Amr Jeb is preparing for a TV series up till our present day. The TV series uh, never appeared on the television, particularly that Amr Jeb is very smart. Some of the older politicians uh, used to say uh, something uh, like uh, Otto Pismark is the iron consultant of Germany in the 19th century. Otto Pismark used to say that stupid people would say I will, I will benefit from my own faults or mistakes. However, what I say that I benefit from the experience of others. I believe this sentence is well applied on Amri Jab situation. Amri Jab uh, saw what other singers uh, uh, face or find when they enter the world of acting recently and uh, didn't achieve uh, the success uh, expected. And I believe failure of uh, the uh, uh, TV series of Muhammad Munir last year postponed uh, the idea of Amr Jeb to come back to the TV. Why did you see yourself? Say you. When you were حسيت بحاجات غريبة في عيون الناس خوفوني من جسمي ومن شكلي استنيت ان واحد منهم يحبني وحبه واتصدر معاه زي زي اي واحد بس كلهم كان يجوا عند حتة الجواز ويفلسعوا امي ما كانتش بتفوق ابدا وجوزها ما كانش هنا خالص فمرة قابلت واحد يوناني ولا ارماني مش فاكرة يعني فرحت بالمبلغ اللي خدته اديت نص لامي خدته ما كانتش فايقه تسالني جبته منين 
ولا يمكن كانت فايقه وطنشت طول عمرها كانت مستخسراني في الحاره كانت تقول لي ان ابوكي كان خواجه بحار انجليزي مره تانيه كانت تقول لي ان اسمه مكتوب في الطاقي لحد دلوقتي عمري ما عرفت هو مين كان نفسي حد يمنعني من السكه دي يضربني يفوقني يمنعني والسلام لو اتصلت عليا بقى هتجيب ايه؟ ده انا اللي ايوه يا والله انا ليا مزاج ادفع من دول ماشي يا بيه عم تخطط مزاجك بس وبقدم العيل اللي هناك بلاش عشان خاطري استنيني هناك شويه هوريك شويه من جنانه يا كباتن ليكوا شوق اوي يا ابو كباتن فتح مخوكم بكام؟ احنا الثلاثة 15 جنيه ماشي يا كابتن interview and when we came to with regards to Amr Diab you kept on saying he is a very intelligent singer he is a very intelligent in his career when it comes to his career he is extremely intelligent could you please and he is more intelligent than the other singers that acted or that in, in uh, of the same generation can you interpret please the meaning of intelligent when it comes to a person that wants to learn how to be successful in his career could you please define the meaning of Amr Diab being an intelligent when it came to his career Amr Diab is considered to be a unique experience Indeed, uh, he uh, repeated this experience because that experience used to be there even before the emergence of Amr Diab, 30 years before the emergence of Amr Diab. I believe that if, when we come to look at the 50s, we can easily find that singers at that time, we had Umm Kalsum, Abdul Wahab, Fareed, and the new generation included Abdul Halim Hafiz and Muhammad Kandia. The least has been Abdul Halim Hafiz. Muhammad, Muhammad Anjil has been a very strong and very powerful singer as well as Umm Kalsum, but Abdul Halim has been very smart. Selection of the word, uh, the uh, melody, as well as the length of the song itself, in addition to his own print, in addition to the groups surrounding him, composed of composers, Bari Hamdi, Kamal al Tawil, Muhammad al Mungi, as well as Wad al Hakim in the media, Amr al Amusi. This is his group that uh, create a certain circle around Abdul Halim Hafiz. He turned to be a star of his own generation. And try to take uh, this experience and 30 years later, we find in the 80s, uh, the beginning of Amr Jab, the beginning of Amr Jab uh, has been, uh, came along with four other singers. Ali al Haggar coming from uh, the uh, Arab uh, Music Academy, Hani uh, Shaka, and he is not taken into account because he started when he was only 14 years old, so he has. Uh, a different uh, form, but uh, the generation of Amr Jal, Muhammad Hassala, Muhammad Al Halim, Muhammad Fuad, and Al Haggar, as well as Omar Fathi, for a while, but of course he died early. So when we come to look at Amr Madhafal, uh, they are very strong as singers in singing. Muhammad Fuad comes after them. Al Amr Jab. He has uh, more intelligence, but maybe less uh, skill or less talent as a singer. Do you see Amr Jab in TV shows? No. Why? Because he's trying to have a certain line. In this line, he's trying just to search for a new melody uh, that can help me to have something new every year. Also, he is very limited. 
shows or interviews in the media. Now we try to compare between him and Muhammad Fuad. This is his main uh, generation of that Muhammad Fuad can forget him, can forget himself and gain weight. Amr Jab never gains weight, for example. Also. Now, Amri Jab all the time has been thinking about the importance of uh, uh, renewing uh, the form he is using or is following through the VG clap. For the first time, we can see the VG clap in a different form where the singer used to be colorful or used to appear in a colorful uh, picture while the people surrounding him come in black and white. This is a new picture. Same happens when he decided to have his movies in Tunisia, as in Habibi and Rai, as well as other songs where he brought many of the singers from abroad. He managed to uh, review, uh, he managed to renew many of his songs. Also, he managed as well to get out of our Badawi uh, as a poet, many good things. So he's been smart enough to get from those people the highest level possible and to be able to use it. Based upon this, we can compare Amri Diab to anybody else who currently exists, either of his own generation or other generation. Amri Diab is in a different place and he's smart enough to continue or to last for more than 20 years with the same power. On the contrary, other things are completely different from this. Uh, those people uh, believe that they are singers, okay, if I do something good, uh, people accept it. If I do something bad, uh, people may ignore it. Taking into consideration the uh, ability, uh, his ability as a singer, he... اشتريتها بأجرة الأوضة بقالي أربع أشهر ما دفعتش. النبي يسعدك بقى الراجل صاحب البيت يخش الحبس من هنا وأنت تتفنطس بالأجرة من هنا؟ والله غصب عني يا ست ثانية البدلة القديمة اشتكت وقالت من الهوا دبنة وأنت عارفة شغلتها دي أصلا تحب المظاهر. أمال وكمان الحب يحب الإيافة. حب هو فين الحب ده يا ست ثانية؟ الحب اللي يشغل ويسهر ما تتكسفش يروح خالتك. لكن قول لي لما يطلع المعلم سلطان من السجن ويمسك لك الخنصر في ايده اليمين والساتور في ايده الشمال هتعمل ايه؟ لسه شهرين على ما يخرج يكون حلها الف حلاق ربنا يجعلها مبروك عليه طب ليميني بقى على القميص علشان الطقم يكمل طب ما هو تعمل وعلى سنجة عشرة اهو لا اصل ما انتش واخدة بالي بس يا ستي يا رب قميص ده ولا ما يوم؟ لا بدلة رأس ده قميص الشغل ما انت عارفاه يلا بقى ليميني على القميص عشان كده تتستر وتبقى عارف سمحتك في الراديو يا سبول بلو صوتك كان بيضاعل على فرويت امبارح قلت يا حلاوتك يا امورتنا يا عظامتك يا ابن حتتنا يا اخوات يعني القميص راح فين حجاب لي نانا ولا عجبتني قوي 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 كمان ساعه ما تقفت عليها وقالت لك قول حاضر يا ست يعني ايه اتخطف في اي لفه والنار يا سبول والملاك عليا يا مين ساعه الناس ما كانت بتسقف قعدت اسقف معاهم لحد ايديا ما تهرت من التسقيف على ايه بس يا ست ثانية؟ دي الحكاية كلها كلمتين ثلاثة وماله يا اخويا؟ مسير الصغير يكبر والقليل يكتر والمية تجري في العالي بس صبرك بالله استنى بختك المنيل القميص كان معايا امبارح بالليل راح فين؟ ومع ذلك البخت عند الله يا سي بلبل خد لك موعظة مني انا في خياطة في مصر تقص على السيتي؟ لا لا مش معقول في معص دار يضرب معص ثانية سكرية لا ما افتكرش ومع ذلك زي ما انت شايف اهو لسه البخت ما جاش so we move on now to another very important prominent singer uh, which is Muhammad Fouad, a renowned singer who also acted and starred in a number of movies most important which the film tackles the story of how Muhammad Fouad was born as a singer uh, and uh, the handsome of course decent uh, singer Izzat Abu Uf, uh, uh, tried to emphasize in this film on the uh, life story of Muhammad Fouad. Uh, your comment on this film, Sir Ismaili Rayhkay. Indeed, this has been the life story of Muhammad Fouad. He tried to show how he managed as, as um, 
the student at Ayn Shams University to reach to this status. It is Isaac Abu Auf has been the one who discovered Muhammad Farah. So Isaac Abu Auf has been playing a real role because he has been the one who discovered the skill and the talent of Muhammad Farah. Indeed, what's really strange is that this has been uh, the, the, the beginning of Muhammad Farah. Hassan Ramzi said, I will produce a movie for you. However, we can easily say that this movie has Was the revenue the time, sir? The revenues were very high, revenues were very high, and indeed he is something different. Before that movie, the other generation, Adel Imam al Sharif, they used to be uh, there for almost 20 years controlling the field. Now the movie has gone to a new category, category of youths who are now entering this field for new young singers. This group has been a new group, and here we can easily say that the field of cinema industry has changed and has been the emergency, the, uh, the emergence of the comedy and uh, followed by Saeed al However, if we try to track Muhammad this movie, you can easily find that Muhammad Fuad has a big problem, big problem with acting, and he belongs to the old school about something that the singer, he must try to attract the sympathy of the viewers, of the audience, is trying to search for his own right. He may be subject to injustice, however, eventually he will be able to achieve his goal. That was the same line he followed in all of his movies or TV series, because in indeed another uh, element inside Muhammad Fadah is then the singing we have seen the uh, singing and the uh, shows and uh, he managed to make a sort of a balance in between the low skill in acting and the high skill of uh, singing so it is the kind of balance between acting and singing but as an actor we can say that he achieved a big success however following this movie three years later after this movie had another important one which is called the Rihla Tahab. In Rihla Tahab, on the level of revenue, and indeed that was the first movie to see Ahmed Khalil in on the level of the revenues, that movie made um, many profits. However, critically speaking, it hasn't been a real movie. It has been a sort of a musical sketch, but it has been well needed in order to be able to present it in the cinema. Following that, Muhammad Fuad uh, didn't manage to achieve any other success either on the cinema level because uh, later he had Amrika uh, Shikabika. No, Amrika Shikabika has preceded Ma'ala Rahgai. Later he had another movie with Hala Shiha. Ibrahim. I'm 
وبعدين بقى في الليله الدرقه دي بقى ما تقوم تشوف نفسها في عم اعمل ايه اهو مخنوقه يعني هي يا جدع بقول لك امي امي بتعملها ما هو دلوقتي انا عرفت ابوك سابك وطفي شريك فاكرين يا عم And he had another TV series after this, or even two, two TV series. The biggest problem is that some of the uh, stories selected by Muhammad Fuad would require from uh, the uh, photography uh, director to have take a close on his face because it includes an internal reaction. He owns this internal reaction in the thinking field. He can't own it in the calm way that may be uh, acceptable to the cinema camera. Uh, indeed, this has been a big problem. Taking into consideration the size of Muhammad Fuad, he may forget himself and he may easily gain weight. And this can make a big problem. Based upon this, Muhammad Fuad uh, didn't achieve the success and uh, the movies he had throughout the last two years didn't achieve the level of success suggested. In, and this would bring us back to Amr Jab. أنا وسهلا أسفة لو كنت فاجئتك من غير معاد أخبار المندوب المقيم إيه؟ <تصفيق> الحقيقة المندوب المقيم واخد فترة استرخاء ومقيم على النيل اتفضلوا يا جماعة اتفضلوا <تصفيق> اتفضلوا فين؟ أه حضرتك اتفضلي اتفضلوا اتفضلوا عندنا منظر النيل هنا تحفة أهلا وسهلا أهلا وسهلا أستاذ علي أنا عند الترابيزين لو عاوزت حاجة بص حضرتك المنظر عامل إزاي؟ يعني في هوا هنا كمان لطيف قوي 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 اجيب لحضرتك كرسي؟ لا انا كنت جاي اشكرك بس على ما انتم معايا بيتهيألي اي حد مكاني كان هيعمل اكتر من كده انت انسان طيب قوي مش آه آه عندنا كركديه هنا ساقعه قوي رمزي بيعمله حلو قوي يا رمزي يا رمزي عايز ايه؟ مش فاضي لك دلوقتي يا ترى المندوب المقيم بيشتغل ايه بالظبط؟ لا المندوب المقيم ما بيشتغلش حاجه دلوقتي انا الحقيقه مقيم في البيت <تصفيق> انت مش ممكن فظيع يا رمي دمك خفيف ولا لطيف ولا ايه حياتك بالظبط معقوله مع اني ما قلتش اي حاجه تضحك هو ازاي بضحك مش عارفه المهم يعني يعني بتعمل ايه ما فيش انا بشرب لبن برافو احيانا بالف اغاني بالف شعر كده يعني بتالف اغاني وشعر وبتشرب لبن بتغسل ما تنام لا انا كمان دمي خفيف يا رمزي يا رمزي عايز ايه؟ على طول كده معلش انا مضطر امشي دلوقتي من غير ما تشربي حاجه كفايه اني شفتك Concluding today's episode, there's one important question I want to ask you, and I will need a quick answer because we're running out of time. Sir, uh, uh, when we come to uh, compare musical films in the past to musical films in the present, uh, or in the present, uh, what um, difference do you see, and when are we going to reach this level of uh, musical films that we used to see in the past? with icons and legend legendaries in the world of singing, acting. In short, there are two important points. First point, the element of production. Uh, the musical movie is very expensive and producers themselves don't like it anymore because producers are not trying or to look at the artistic part. Moreover, for the musical movie, in the past they used to be much more beautiful than nowadays, despite technology or having a lighting and cameras. However, we used to have a movie director and also directors for different musical performances inside the movie. So the cast of the movie has been very good nowadays. Now, wherever we are having a musical movie or a musical performance, we try to have the same director for both. 
So there, uh, a discrepancy or a contradiction will occur because not all of the actors do have the same talent. Uh, still, we need to say that we are uh, an oriental uh, people who admire uh, uh, the past. Uh, Mr. Ahmed Saad Al-Din, Cinema Critique, we thank you so much, sir, for your knowledge and we thank you so much for being with us in today's episode of Zoom In. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all for today's episode of Zoom In, and we brought you the musical films. We brought you musical films in the past, and we brought you musical films in the present. Hope you've enjoyed being with us in today's episode as much as we have. From all the team here, your host, Ronald Qassas, and our director, Walid al Ashi and Ayman al Sayed, it's goodbye, and until we meet in another episode next week, it's goodbye.